shalom everyone shalom people of god i go by the name ruben micah i'm also known as ruby mc if this is your first time on this channel please go below this video and click on the subscribe button don't forget to hit the bell to get notified whenever we post a new video this episode promises to be very very interesting as i am going to be talking about one of the biggest pastors in the world i never wanted to talk about him this early though but i asked my youtube community who they wanted me to talk about next and they picked him it is no longer a rumor that this pastor i'm going to be talking about in this video is the richest pastor in the world and make no mistake about that because he is so very quickly i will be doing a brief biography of this preacher then i would be scrutinizing the doctrines and system of his ministry by the Urim and Tumim, which is the word of God. Then finally, as usual, I will be giving my final verdict on if this preacher is a true man of God. So please join me with an open mind. This is a very bad time to be distracted because I'm about to shock a whole lot of you with the things I will be saying in this video. Like, I will shock you into the reality of scriptures. So my subscribers already know how we do it right here. Buckle your seatbelt as you're about to hit high altitude right now. Let's go! all right so for the benefit of those of you that do not know the man although this preacher is a very popular preacher you should know him you can actually go on google to read all about him his name is bishop david olani oyedepo now bishop david oyedepo is a nigerian preacher and founder of living faith church worldwide his headquarters at Ogun State, Nigeria is called Faith Tabernacle and popularly known as Winner's Chapel. Bishop David Oyedepo is married to Faith Abiola Oyedepo and they are blessed with four children. Bishop Oyedepo's ministry has branches in over 300 cities in all states of Nigeria. These branches are also in over 45 african countries and in different parts of the world he is the chancellor of covenant university and landmark university born to a muslim father on the 27th of september 1954 he is a native of Kwara state and is currently the second most influential pastor in the world now it is a very difficult task for anyone to do a scrutiny on the ministry of this bishop because a lot of people idolize him Many are ready to insult, threaten, and even manhandle those who criticize him. Even some of his so-called sons in the ministry who are notable religious leaders and big-time general overseers, they are ready to physically hurt those who criticize him. So, but that only goes a long way to prove to us that they are hypocrites and not true Christians. Because true Christians would never do that. Jesus was criticized. He never physically hurt anyone was criticized there is no record in the bible shows showing that he fought with anyone for that if a preacher is a true man of god he would welcome criticism because he would know that no amount of criticism can bury the truth but preachers who hurt those who criticize them and who fight those who criticize them they do that because they know that their critics are saying the truth so and they are also scared of being exposed so that being said let's get down to business now the first thing we would be looking at in the ministry of this bishop is this that word bishop you know today in the churches people have a different viewpoint to what a bishop is and how a bishop to be seen in the church but let us see what he says in the bible the first place i want us to look at is in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 to 11. he boldly states there that when jesus christ ascended he gave gifts unto men and these gifts have been given from the beginning but let's just take it from the new testament because we are in the new testament era now jesus christ gave gifts unto men and the bible called, named those gifts he said apostles pastors prophets teachers evangelists you don't hear anything like bishop in it so anyone who is ordained by god must fall in between these offices must be an apostle a pastor a teacher an evangelist or a prophet you don't see bishop why don't you see bishop there we are getting to that now in a church the highest office in a church is not a bishop the highest office in a church is a pastor because a pastor means shepherd so 
a pastor is ordained by god because the bible says that jesus christ gave that gift so it's not a gift that a man gives another man no it's a gift that god gives now a man can see that gift working in another man and say oh you have the gift of a pastor okay now be a pastor over so so place now who is that man that can do that that's an apostle take for instance paul paul was an apostle paul raised two men paul had two sons who he sent to be pastors over places take for instance timothy timothy was sent as a pastor to people in philippians in philippi i mean the philippians you see that in philippians chapter one from verse one you read down you're going to understand what I, what I mean now paul made timothy a pastor and if you read the book of first timothy from uh, chapter three from verse one to fifteen you get to see that paul was instructing timothy how to raise elders in the church and these elders could either be bishops or deacon and in that scripture first timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 15 paul was giving him the criterias and qualities he would see in these people before he can ordain them to be past um, bishop or deacon that is a pastor who have to ordain elders because a pastor is like a king so a king needs elders around him who would advise him or who would guide him or who would walk with him just as moses too had elders who were judging the 12 tribe, tribes of israel now before you argue with me also paul had one other pastor too that he sent to be a pastor over the church in crete which if you see that in the book in uh, the book of titus chapter one you read down when you read verse four you notice that paul was writing the letter to titus so titus was a pastor now pa titus was a pastor in crete when you see it in verse four now in verse five paul says that for this cause left i thee in crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting so he made him a pastor so that he can set things in order in the church because the pastor is the one that set things in order he's the chief of the church standing in the place of christ so that thou may set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as i had appointed thee so the apostle sent a pastor to go and pastor a church then the pastor should set things in order and ordain elders a pastor can ordain an elder and say you you are an elder you are going to hand over this disease in a church so can you see that a pastor is higher than a bishop but in this man's ministry the reverse is the case he is the bishop and pastors are under him this ought not to be so but i know a lot of you may not agree with me on this but i've shown you scriptures let's move to the next one now the second thing i would love to talk about regarding this man's ministry is a doctrine i had preached in his ministry some time ago and this doctrine is a serious doctrine in every living faith church and i would love to address it because i believe that the misinterpretation of this doctrine can take a lot of people to hell now we are going to weigh this doctrine with the scriptures and find out if it is the truth or if it is not now it is being preached in every winner's chapel or every living faith church that john the baptist baptized with water and that water baptism ended with him because according to them they said that according to matthew chapter 3 verse 11 mark chapter 1 verse 8 luke chapter 3 verse 16 john chapter 1 verse 26 to 33 that john the baptist made it clear that he baptized with water but the jesus that is coming after him is going to baptize with holy ghost and fire so that means that Jesus Christ came to replace water baptism with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And thus, in every branch of Living Faith Church, in every of the ministry of Bishop David Oyedepo, nobody is being baptized by, uh, by water. Nobody has done water baptism because they believe that water baptism has been done away with and has been replaced with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of speaking in tongues and the rest. But that is not true when you relate it to scriptures now not too long after jesus christ resurrected the bible recorded that the holy ghost came down on the day of pentecost upon the apostles the bible records in the book of Acts chapter 8 if you read from verse 1 down especially if you read around verse 36 to 39 the bible recorded that there was a eunuch who was reading the book of isaiah i didn't understand it philip came and explained that book to him and linked what the prophecy of Isaiah to Jesus Christ and then the Enoch knew that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation then the Enoch if you read verse 36 the Bible says they came unto a certain water when you read down to 39 you see somewhere around there that it says they both went into the water and Philip baptized him so if water baptism has been done away with Philip will not be baptizing someone 
in the water after Jesus Christ was gone because um, Philip was among the apostles of Jesus Christ who ought to do the deeds of Jesus Christ like so the pastors of today ought to be doing because they are continuing from where the apostles stop that's why Paul said anybody that come and do anything contrary to what the apostles have done in Galatians chapter 1 he said let him be accursed so Philip being an apostle of Jesus baptized somebody in water when you read Acts chapter uh, 19 verse 1 to 5 Paul baptized the disciples of John the Baptist again who did not have the Holy Ghost he baptized them first in water when you read Acts chapter uh, 19 verse 5 he baptized them again in water before they received the holy ghost now if that's not enough proof for you you can read the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 47 where peter was sent to preach to cornelius who was a gentile and while peter was speaking the bible recorded that the holy ghost fell upon cornelius and his household and peter said in that verse 47 of Acts chapter 10 that can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized which have received the holy ghost as we what peter meant was that would anybody say these people should not do water baptism because while we were preaching the holy ghost have come upon them because people make it look as if you, uh, you must be uh, baptizing water first before you receive the holy ghost but now these ones were not baptizing water they received the holy ghost so it's the goal only to receive the holy ghost don't you know that we also need to baptize these people in water when you read down peter had to baptize them again in water do you understand so this defeats the claim of any church saying that water baptism has been done away with in fact any christian that is not baptized in water cannot make it to heaven you just make that claim in john chapter 3 so if you read from verse 1 to 5 jesus christ said except a man is born of water and of the spirit he said he cannot see the kingdom of god he cannot enter into the kingdom of god now finally to further silence any other person who has further argument but if you have your argument feel free to tell me about it in the comment section but before you argue i'd want you to read john chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 you get to realize that the bible says that jesus christ baptized more disciples in water than john the baptist is there john chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 so what i want you to know is that although jesus christ himself did not baptize anybody by himself jesus christ disciples were the one baptizing people for jesus so jesus christ had more people coming to the river to be baptized than john the baptist so if water baptism had been done away with jesus christ would have not still established water baptism so any bunch of people no matter the number no matter the crowd that have not been baptized in water cannot make it to the kingdom of god so time will fail us to dwell much on this matter but let's pause it there those of you that have the holy ghost should know what is the truth by now and let's go on to the next item now few things i would love to talk about but i may not have the time to expand on them so but we can talk more about them in the comment section is that female ministers are being ordained in living faith church uh, women are being ordained as pastors and uh, uh, deaconess which you can't find such the word deaconess in the bible you can't find a female priest in the bible women do not have access to climb straight to the altar it has not been in the old testament or neither in the new testament females in the new testament were not known as apostles they were assisting they were aiding the apostles they were aiding the men it, it, would, it would surprise some of you to know that on the day of Pentecost, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was present. But you don't see her talking. You don't see her usurping authority. And Paul warned in the Bible that a woman should not usurp authority in the church. But the difference is the case in Bishop Oedipus ministry. And then the church has universities that the poor cannot afford to attend. Even poor members of Winners Chapel cannot afford to attend because of the high rate of school fees. Which I believe that if Jesus Christ should have such universities, I don't think Jesus Christ would make the poor pay or Jesus Christ would even collect money for anyone to attend such university. Then um, Bishop Oyedipo also has a Bible school where preachers go to um, get a certificate before they can be recognized as preachers or go to learn, go to be taught about the word of God, which you can't find such trend or a link to such in the Bible. There is no preacher in the bible who ever went to any bible school but bishop Oyedipo has a bible school which is called wolf b and then there's a kind of high standard in his church required for as in if any minister or if anyone wants to become a minister there is a very high standard required some people have even have even told me that in his church is, is the rich that are being ordained as ministers more often but i don't know how true that is so but um there's also the recent viral uh, phone conversation between peter obi and bishop Oyedipo, which many claim is fake so but 
we don't know if it's fake or if it's true but when i listen to the phone conversation myself and i doubt that it is fake that's my opinion so but if that phone conversation was true then it goes a long way to show that there is high level of politics going on in the church which is not right which is not by applicable which scripturally it is wrong then uh, a, a, a man of god should not be meddling with political affairs that's why jesus christ said my kingdom is not of this world jesus christ will not have any business with worldly affairs i don't see jesus christ if jesus christ were to be here today you you know that this deep down in your heart jesus christ will not have anything to do with buhari I'm telling you the truth. Jesus Christ will not be smiling with politicians because a lot of them are not doing good. You understand? Just the same way Elijah. Elijah was having issues with Ahab. A lot of prophets in the Bible, they were having issues with the, the, the kings and the, the rulers of those days. How much more this time when we begin to see pastors and the government becoming so close or pastors aiding men to get into governmental seats, you begin to know that something is fishy. Now, finally, we are going to be talking about one more thing regard, in regards to this ministry. And what is that? That is the yearly program that always happen in Living Faith Church, which people call Shiloh. So I did my findings on why Shiloh was invented and I got to find out that they said that the Holy Spirit brought it up and that uh, it is the main reason for it is for every member of the Winners Church to come together and then have, they said there are two major reasons for it, two altars that are raised for it. I said the first one is the altar of sacrifice, the second one is the altar of vow that uh, people have to sacrifice to god something that will cost them something that is painful so that god will give them their desires but my question is this and i want to ask this question very sincerely and if you are a christian you should be very truthful in your response in the new testament would anyone do this kind of thing or was there any practice in the new testament like this then if you have read your bible very well from matthew to revelation and you have not seen anything like this, I want to ask you a question. Why do you think it was not like that in the Bible? That's because that yearly practice of Shiloh has ended. Because Shiloh is not only a place. Shiloh is not really a place like it was in the Old Testament because the Old Testament is not the real deal. The Old Testament is a shadow pointing you to the real thing. Jesus is the fulfillment of every practice in the Old Testament. And I'll prove that to you with scriptures. First of all, Shiloh is not only a place, although it was a place in the Old Testament when God took the children of Israel from Egypt and when they got to the promised land, Joshua divided the lot between the children of Israel in a place called Shiloh and they built a temple for God in a place called Shiloh and that place was still like that, was still honored as the house of God till the days of Samuel, the days of Hannah, Samuel, you know the prophet Samuel? Till that time, people were still going to Shiloh to go and offer God a yearly sacrifice. But by the time you read the book of Jeremiah chapter 7, you read that chapter down from verse 1, you read Jeremiah 26 verse 6, you read Psalm 78 verse 55 to 60, hear what Jeremiah and David said about Shiloh. What happened in Shiloh? Shiloh got, it got to a time in that temple in Shiloh that the people were taking advantage, undue advantage of the people of God and God got angry. God judged them. When they moved the temple from that place to another location, those ones still did the same thing. Jesus Christ, God was not warning them in the scriptures that I, I, I will do to you the same thing I did to these people in Shiloh. Why? Because constantly human beings began to have, or men begin to have a, 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 a corrupted mind when they begin to see people come and give sacrifice to God. They were taking advantage of the sacrifices that people were bringing. So God had to put an end to it. You can read your Bible and see for yourself. Time will fail me to be quoting much scriptures or to be reading the scriptures. That's why I'm quoting them for you to do your personal research so your eyes will be open. So now, to prove to you that Shiloh is not really a place, because God said that he placed his name in that place. That name, Shiloh, is the name of God. God placed his name in the place, just like Israel. Israel is the name of God. God said, if my people who are called by my name. So now, to prove to you that Shiloh is, is God, we we'll read the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the garden of the people be. The scepter 
the anointing of the promised seed, the promise will not depart from Judah until Judah will produce a child who will put an end to all controversy. Who's going to be a, who's going to be the greatest promised child? He says, and unto him to show you that Shiloh is a personality. Shall the guardian of the people be? And this is Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ is the true Shiloh. So if if Jesus Christ had wanted us to be doing it that way, Jesus Christ would have given a commandment. You would have seen the apostles doing it. Now there's no account in the scriptures where any apostle was telling anybody to come and do any yearly sacrifice that's not true and paul was was serious in galatia chapter one when he was saying that any pastor anybody that comes and do anything contrary to what the apostles have, apostles have done he said let him be a cost why would you be demanding a necessary or necessity yearly uh, sacrifice from people when god jesus christ said that god loveth a cheerful giver he said not grudgingly not of a necessity yeah? God who loves a cheerful giver. Jesus Christ was angry with the Pharisees because they were making it a necessity for people to come and give. They were even laying more emphasis or making the people fear the money in the temple more than the altar. So my major, my major analysis here or my major point here is this. Is that nobody in the New Testament had any yearly sacrifice of Shiloh or observed Shiloh. Because Shiloh is an Old Testament law. And Paul made it clear that if anybody will keep, or the Bible made it clear, even the New Testament, other apostles, they made it clear that if anybody will keep the Old Testament law, then you should keep all. Because if you are guilty in one, you are guilty in all. Why would you take the people to the Old Testament and just bring out um, sacrifice only? There are many Old Testament laws that should be kept if at all you want to keep Old Testament law. Why not? Why, just, why do you just bring only the one that requires yearly sacrifice every time? So, and judging by the fact that this preacher we are talking about is the richest preacher in the world, you, you begin to understand where the whole thing is heading to. Now, I, I watched some videos online and I saw the way people were doing an analysis on this man's ministry. I noticed that in this Shiloh program, people sell items, hoping that when they use these things to pray, God is going to answer their prayer. People sell anointing oil. People sell one or two things. People sell things. And people say, and so so person gave a testimony after using this. This is one of the things that made Jesus go, go mad in the scripture. Jesus Christ flogged people out of the temple over two tables. Jesus Christ got very angry because he saw people doing buying and selling in the temple. Now some people say, ah, they are not selling it in the temple now, it is outside the temple. It's the same thing. Why are you taking money from the people to give them something uh, that, good, that God is supposed to give them? You are selling something. That, these kind of people, if they should have access to the blood of Jesus, they will sell it to people. It's wrong. These things are wrong. So, but time will fail me to keep saying more and more on this. But I want you, being a sincere Christian, not somebody that I don't want you, someone that is blind with his love for man. Because Bible says, woe to them that put their trust in man. So, I want you to tell me. Let it not be that I'm the one saying it now. You tell me, based on what the scriptures have said and what have been said so far, do you still think that this man is worth listening to? Do you still think that this man is worth packing all your money to? every year in the name of you want to receive something from God then is there a biblical basis for it what the Bible approve of is tithes and offering I can even show you in the New Testament I can take it to the Old Testament I can balance it to you it's in the New Testament the Apostles did it Jesus Christ even approve of it I can show it to you so but there's nothing like yearly sacrifice Shiloh whatever Shiloh as God has judged the, the, the temple issue God has judged that yearly practice of Shiloh God has ended it Jesus Christ has come to fulfill everything so why are we still caged with such in the name of going to give your money to church and then church is getting richer the members are getting poorer you think about it you think about it and tell me if you still think that this man is a true man of God you you go to the comment section let me hear your comments feel free to say whatever you want to say Till we meet again, I remain Ruben Micah, also known as Ruby MC. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. Videos that will be exposing false preachers and revealing the truth of the word of God to you. God bless you and I love you. Ciao.